Okay, so I came across this story about a pastor named Dwayne Miller who ended up contracting an infection in his throat that ruined his voice. And this infection had kept him from being able to speak normally. And this infection lasted for like three years where his voice sounded like this. And then all of a sudden he was asked to give a sermon. And during this sermon, he begins to preach about the healing powers of God. And in the middle of his sermon, you can literally hear him be healed. This is one of the most powerful recordings I've probably ever heard in my life. So with this in mind, I challenge you to listen to this recording and try not to get emotional. Check this out. So when the psalmist writes, and he heals all of my diseases, let me say to you that I believe God still heals. That hasn't ended. That is not over. Now you have to be careful on how you do this. Because there are folks who carry things to an excess and it becomes a show. And God has never intended that that be what it is. God heals in his sovereign will. I don't know why God does things that he does. But I know that he does. And the only thing he requires of me is to allow him to be God and me to be me and let it be. To say that every single person will always be healed because Jesus died on the cross is a misinterpretation of scripture. Not true. Won't work. Isaiah 53 doesn't talk about physical healing. I'm sorry. That's just not the context. And to impress that there causes a misinterpretation of scripture. That's wrong. On the other hand, to say that, since we don't have anything after the book of Acts, that miracles ended at the book of Acts and they never happen again, is equally as wrong. Because you have put God in a box both ways. And he doesn't want to be in the box. So, the psalmist says, I'm excited. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. One of his benefits is he heals all of my diseases. And then in verse 4 he says, and he redeems my life from the pit. Now, I like that verse just a whole lot. I have had, and you have had in times past, pit experiences. We've both had, we've all had times when our life seemed to be in a pit, in a grave. And we didn't have an answer for the pit we find ourselves in. And I don't understand this right now. I'm been overwhelmed at the moment. I'm not quite sure what to say or do. <laughs> I'm uh, Sounds funny to say at a loss for words. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I <laughs> He redeems my life from the pit. <laughs> and crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my desires with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is slow to anger. The Lord is abounding in love. The Lord will not accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, that's mercy. Or repay us according to our iniquities, that's mercy. 
for as high as the heavens are above the earth. So great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. I don't know about you, but my mind is literally blown right now. But just like Jesus said in Matthew 19, 26, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen.